Hello, Blender community. I'm Samuel Bernou, the developer of Story Tools. In this feature overview video, we're going to see everything about this interaction focus tool for storyboarding and 2D animation in Blender. There's a lot to talk about, so let's start right away. You can get Story Tools by using the link to the repository in the description. You just have to scroll down and click on Download Latest. Note that for Blender 4.2 and below, you have to go to the release page to get a dedicated version. And very important, here as well as in the description, you have a link to the documentation. The documentation is quite complete. You will find every information you need to know about the add-on. Here you have animated demo for every tool in the control bar. That might help you see how it works and which shortcut to use. And you can find every details that are not covered in this video, like specific installation process and other add-on to synergize with story tools. Let's talk about the interface. At the bottom, you will see the control bar that you can toggle with this little button. For the sidebar, you can directly click this as a shortcut to get access to it. And here I can create a new drawing. And when a grease pencil object is active, you will see the tool preset bar here. So first, let's focus on the control bar. You might have noticed that this button turned blue when I created the grease pencil object. And this is to notice you that you're in draw mode. If you click on it, you will toggle between draw mode and object mode. And it, this lets you switch easily uh, by selecting objects. You can also shift click on it to call the add drawing menu. Same as this button here. An interesting aspect of the control bar is that every action is independent of the modes. So for example, here I'm in draw mode and I can still move my object around without leaving it and do the basic transformation just by using the mouse or the tablet pen. The control bar is divided in four sections. The first is the object controls that affects only the object transformation that you can key here. And the second is the camera transformation. And you can see that it affects the camera even if you're not in camera view, except for this button to rotate the view that affects the view here. You can click once to reset. And this button here is to enter the camera. And here you can see that it's bringing the camera with it. And again, you can click once to reset uh, the view horizontally. This button locks the current viewport to pan only, so that way you won't come out of camera accidentally. And here you can key the camera. The auto control here are not related to camera or active objects. It's just the auto key, a way to snap the cursor to selected and the button we've seen before. And the last section is related to grease pencil data and we only show if you have a grease pencil object selected. Now let's talk about some of the most useful tools when it comes to 3D space placement. With this button, uh, you can lock the camera to view uh, as a toggle. And uh, here I can realign the object with my view. And the uh, interesting thing is that if the object is uh, somewhere and I want it in front of camera, I can shift click on it uh, to bring it in front. So now it's too close, so I can move it uh, uh, forward. Uh, with that and uh, by pressing alt I can constrain it to be on a horizontal plane which is what I want here. Another interesting thing is that if I press control uh, the object will still move in the depth but it will compensate the scale so that it doesn't change uh, within camera view and with the overlay you can see how it's placing. Of course, you have tooltips when you let your mouse over so you can see uh, every details about those tools. So another interesting one is the move camera in depth. So same as the object by moving left to right, you can uh, adjust the depth of the camera. Same uh, with Alt, you can constrain to a horizontal plane. And the other interesting thing here is that if you press Control before uh, clicking and dragging, you will adjust instead the focal lens uh, or the autographic scale if you are with an autographic camera. And here there is a, a little hidden feature is that if you press D, 
uh, you will switch to uh, dolly mode or vertigo effects. So the focus point is on the active objects and uh, you can see that uh, the camera is moving to uh, to adjust for uh, for it. So yeah, and this is uh, kept on. So if I re-click on control, I'm still in Dolly. I have to click the D key. You can see on the upper left corner uh, the status of this. The camera pan also have a dual functionality. If you just press, you're entering the pan modes. Shift to go more smoothly or control to lock on local axis. Note that you can also uh, press X and Y as a toggle right after. But if you hold control before uh, clicking on the, and dragging the button, you will instead adjust the shift of the camera. So that's why it's easier than hold, moving the value. And once you're in it, uh, if you keep pressing Alt, you will snap on every half frame. And so that way you can snap again easily on zero zero. So now let's talk about the sidebar tab. So ideally, you could collapse completely the uh, properties and the outliner uh, to have more space for this, and you would have everything you need for storyboarding. So the first thing is the camera uh, settings. Uh, here you can add uh, other camera. By the way, you have a shortcut to the passepartout here that you can uh, toggle with this button. In, the, in this submenu, you have uh, access to uh, settings for the active camera like uh, changing focal presets and uh, add the track to target and, and that kind of stuff that you can see in the documentation. Once you are finished with the camera section, you can focus on the drawing, which actually are the grease pencil objects. And you can toggle the visibility grid here. Here I have a little uh, warning. It's because my object has a non-uniform scale or a scale that is not applied. So let's not bother about it. Uh, if I click the plus here, I can create another object and uh, here the visibility toggle is actually controlling the visibility and the rendering state as well so that's interesting because you have a what you see is what you get approach here are the in front toggles that is really useful and uh, other option that you can um, see here or when everything is um, a bit uh, have a bit more space and note that uh, when you change the objects, the, it keeps the current mode. If I'm, if I'm in edit mode here, the mode will be transferred uh, to the object. Uh, that also avoids the hindrance of going back to object mode. After that, you have the layer list. Uh, every new grease pencil object is created with these four layers, uh, which are optimal for storyboard. And you have also this default stack. Uh, note that uh, when you have a uh, layer selected and you click on another material, it is uh, synchronized with it. So that if you click again on sketch, you can see here that the line white is selected again. Uh, if you don't want this behavior, you can disable the material sync here. Now for the brush section, you have to be in draw mode because it's the, actually the native uh, panel that is instantiated. Uh, in the color, you can quickly change between vertex color mode or material. You have the same menu here natively. Uh, but uh, the nice thing here is that you have the color wheel and uh, you have access to the uh, material settings and you can quickly create a material from the vertex color. For example, here I want, uh, let's say, a yellow fill and it will add it to the stack right away. Uh, with the setup you want and talking about material management uh, you also have several options here like loading the base palette uh, which is the default palette here when creating from story tools or uh, add an existing material here all the material are already in stack but uh, it's interesting um, just to click to add any material or you can load a material from another object now to finish with the sidebar overview, you have the align view to object uh, option that will face the drawing plane with a little button to switch to the opposite view. And this tool uh, section is actually the grease pencil tools add-on panel that is replicated here. Uh, this one is available on the extension platform.
Now let's move on to the tool preset section. Those are actually uh, shortcuts that generate this button. For example, this one, select the brush fill and select the layer color. And this button can be adjusted in the preference. You have a shortcut to the preference here. Uh, in the tool preset tab, uh, you, will, you can see all these shortcuts um, and you can adjust uh, what the shortcut does. For example, if I want the layer to be set to line here, I just have to type line here. And note that if you uh, change the order of the shortcut or add a new tool, you have to click the reload UI uh, for this change to happen. For example, if I untick this one, I hit the reload and you see that it disappeared here. Clicking again, uh, it's all right. And you can reorder them uh, here. When using the shortcuts, you can really quickly change into the different step of the drawing and this allows a, a smoother storyboard workflow. Once you're used to the shortcuts and don't want to see the buttons anymore, you can go to the preferences and disable the tool preset bar here. The shortcuts are still valid. And the same thing applies to the other section. If you don't want to see the slide bar, uh, you can disable it or disable the control bar. So that way you can customize your story tools experience. Now let's enable all this because those are awesome. And uh, here you can also uh, disable the uh, visual hints if you don't want to see them or the uh, temporary minimaps. Now let's talk about some more hidden feature. For example, you can display a minimap in uh, this drop down menu uh, with several options. The easiest is probably the pick editor to minimap where you click again on an editor. Here uh, you will see a top view that is locked on this view. You can move the object from this, uh, rotate um, scale, and here is the uh, rotate for the view. Single click will reset, and some of them to frame uh, either the objects, only the active objects, or everything. And you can uh, add a grease pencil objects by clicking again here, for example, or uh, you can just click and drag uh, to add the same in the same fashion. So here, obviously, there are not many elements, so that's not really interesting. But if you have a big set with a lot of character interacting, um, it's really interesting to see uh, how they enter in the camera frame and everything. Also note that on this window, you have to hide the asset shelf manually. That's better. And the last thing is this button to come back to a normal viewport. Story tools add a new scale figure overlay in Grease Pencil, so that helps drawing to scale. You can customize the default ruler here, and you have all the presets. And this uh, overlay snaps onto the origin of the Grease Pencil and is independent of the uh, object scale, so that way you always have real-world reference. And you can see that the cube is actually quite big in real-world scale. If you want to have more control over the scale, placement, and such, you can bake it as a grease pencil layer here. Now to finish this overview, on this panel you have uh, some settings of the viewports. Uh, as presets you can save or load the defaults for the view and tool settings, or load a workspace dedicated to storyboards using Spark or Story Pencil. Uh, using either a single workspace or a dual workspace. Uh, so this is included in Story Tools. And if you start from a new file, you also have it in the new category here. So that's all about Story Tools version 2.20. It was heavily developed at Autour de Menu Studio with the support of the CNC. You'll find everything you need in the description. Thank you for watching.